Good morning. Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany. Anybody know what season this is? Stewardship season. Four weeks of it. I love the stewardship season. In our sermon today, we're looking at two ways of approaching stewardship. We're looking at the Corinthians from Greece and the Macedonians from Greece. And we're going to see what that has to do with our stewardship today. So stay tuned. Please stand as we sing our processional hymn 388, O Worship the King. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Exodus 17. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Israel to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people, take some of the elders of Israel with you, take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you at the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it, so the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of, of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? And next we'll do the psalm in your, um, in your leaflet and we'll do it responsively. Hear my teaching, O my people, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. marvels in the sight of their forefathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He brought streams out of the cliff, and waters rushed out, gushed out like rib, rivers.
A reading from 2 Corinthians. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overwhelmed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For us, I can testify they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered him, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went, went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after that, you, even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. As we remain standing, let us pray. Holy Father, give us hearts of gratitude that we might be like you. Through Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Today's sermon is the first of four sermons. We are in our stewardship season here at Epiphany. We are looking forward to the coming of a new rector among us. And we have been continuing our life apace, all the uh, missionary endeavors, the, the, the outreach endeavors that have been a part of our common life continue to be a part of our common life. We're going to ask you to, uh, as you receive a pledge card in the mail next week, or, and we'll have them here also in the gathering area, if you'll prayerfully fill out that pledge card about what you believe God wants you to give in the coming year. And I want to give you the secret to what's going to make it easy for you to fill out that pledge card. Trust me in that. If you can't, and we want you to uh, also, if you can, give it, bring it on the 22nd of October where we'll have the gathering of all of our pledges before the Lord. If you can't make it on that Sunday, don't worry. Let me tell you a story that will put your mind at ease about your missing that Sunday. There were two men who were stranded on a desert island. Storm came up and pushed them onto the desert island. Their ship was broken to... Uh, not being able to be repaired and one of the men was just pacing back and forth pacing back and forth what are we going to do we're on this desert island no one else is here no one knows where we are nobody's going to find us and we're going to die on this desert island meanwhile his companion friend was just sitting under the palm tree just relaxing sunning himself whistling and his friend said, how can you do that? How can you do that? How can you be so relaxed? 
Because we're, no one knows we're here. No one will know how to find us and we're gonna die here. He said, relax. Someone will find us. I make a million dollars a year. I tithe to my church. This is stewardship month. I guarantee you my priest is going to find me. <laughs> so I want to deal with, as I said, the question of what's going to make filling out your pledge card easy for you to do. How we learn that, how we get there, uh, we're, we're looking at the, the letter from court from Paul to the Corinthians, his second letter that he wrote to them. And the first two letters of the, to the Corinthians were written about 30 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. I don't know about you, but I remember where I was 30 years ago. My family and I were in Memphis. We planted a church and we were enjoying that, the newness of the church, the newness of people, bringing the gospel to people's lives and worship to their souls. And it's just like yesterday. Well, so for me, 30 years ago, it's not so hard to imagine that those early Christians, many of them remembered the ministry of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as if it were yesterday. And we have in our reading two groups of people, two groups of Christians, and they show us a little glimpse into the life of the early church. You know, we probably mostly look at the early church with rose-colored glasses. They were wonderful Christians. They were aglow with the Spirit. Well, not all of them. The, you had two groups of people that Paul was writing about in our reading today. The Macedonian Christians were in the northern part of Greece and the Corinthian Christians were in the southern part of Greece. What had happened was Jerusalem was uh, under uh, extreme circumstances. They were, uh, there was a famine that covered the land there and they had sent out pleas for the Christians all throughout the Roman Empire to help them in their time of need. Corinthians said, Roger Dodger, we're ready to go. They, as a church, the Corinthians were vibrant, they were aggressive, they, they excelled in the spiritual gifts, Paul said. Uh, they gathered together very, very frequently. They argued a lot over the faith. He said, one group said, well, but this is what Paul said, and I'm of Paul. And another group in the church said, no, I am of Apollos. And a third group said, well, I am of Christ. And so they were aggressive, and, and not in a bad way necessarily, but they wanted to show their knowledge and their wisdom about the faith. And so when the cry came for assistance to Jerusalem, they were standing firm on the first step. Count on us. We're going to provide our fellow Christians with support. And then they forgot. Sort of like filling out your pledge card and then in October saying, I wonder what I, what I paid on my pledge card. I forgot, I forgot all about that. And so it may be that they forgot. It may be that they just moved on with life. And so Paul is, is telling them, you know, there are some Christians here that we know in Macedonia who really went to bat for those Christians in the, the Promised Land. Let's read, if you will, um, I can't find my reading. Oh. Okay, here we are. Verse 1. 
uh, chapter 8, verse 1 in our epistle reading. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia, the northern Christians. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, the abundant joy, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity. Now we don't know why the Macedonian Christ, Christians were under extreme challenges and poverty, but they put together three things that our modern minds would not do. Extreme poverty, challenge of affliction, and abundance of joy. Because we are raised to believe that it takes money to be happy. The American dream is to own a house and have cars and and able to afford all the things you want and so we we deep down we have this view of poverty that if you're poor there must be something wrong with you but it's like Ronald Reagan used to say you know I grew up poor but nobody told us that so we didn't realize we were poor well that's what's happening here the Macedonians were not just poor and oh woe is me, they were abundant in their joy because their joy was not dependent upon their income. And so they gave to the Jerusalem Christians what they could, but Paul said, and even more. They, they went beyond the poverty that they experienced. So the key to filling out your pledge card is to have a spirit of joy. The key to understanding this passage is this. When you really, really, really get it as to what it means to be a Christian, then you know it's not a matter of how much money I've got. It's a matter of how much joy I have. And that joy overflows to gratitude to God who has given us life, everyday life, abundant life in this world, and eternal life beyond this life. And out of that flows a generous spirit. And that's what the Macedonians experienced, generosity. And when we are generous then we echo the heart of God. When we are generous, we are as God is toward us who has given us everything. Look at verse 3. For as I can testify, the voluntary, they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us. That's the key, giving ourselves first to the Lord and then to the church. No one gave nothing. No one gave everything in the Macedonian church but all gave something. Each gave as they were able, and some were able to give above and beyond. They didn't give when they felt like it, or if they had some spare cash, they gave according to their ability and then beyond. I had a parishioner at the cathedral uh, who said, you know, I used to give politely, I used to give like I gave to Salvation Army bucket. I would walk out of the store and there would be the bucket with the person ringing the bell and I would give a couple dollars and felt pretty good about myself because most people were giving change, spare change, and I gave a couple dollars. He said, but as I, and when I came to church, I did the same thing. I gave politely. 
I gave, I gave more than a couple bucks. It was really pretty generous, but I only gave if I went to church. And then as I began to grow as a Christian, as my spiritual life began to take off, I decided that I wanted to give methodically to the church, methodically to the Lord. And so I put a plan together to give a tithe of my income. And one year, I just sort of got lost in what I was giving. And when it came time for me to fill out uh, my income tax return, I realized that I had given 20% of my income to charity. He said, and you know, I didn't miss that money. God had blessed me. He said, so now I'm a generous giver because God has been generous to me. So, what's the secret to filling out your pledge card? Fill out your pledge card as a measure of your gratitude toward God and what God has given you. Giving is a matter of the heart. Anyone can be shamed into giving. I could say, the church needs your money. We have, we have these ministries that we're trying to support. We've got a new rector coming. We, we could shame you into giving once, but we can't sh- shame you into giving more than once. Because giving is not about shame. Giving is about gratitude. And God wants us to give with a gracious heart because God has been gracious toward us. So, does God give you, love you more if you give more? No. God will li- love you just as much if you don't pledge to the Church of the Epiphany. But if you do pledge and you, you give to that pledge, you will find yourself more in a place where you can receive God's other blessings and benefits in your life that not giving keeps you from being able to experience. I hope that makes sense. Those Macedonian Christians, they knew how to give. They gave gratefully to the God who gave them everything. So, I'll ask you a question. How's your heart? Amen. Let us read from our faith in the words of Nicene Creed, found on page 358. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Even the Holy Spirit, the the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Three, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in your Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, remembering especially Hannah Luganbill, Sandra Brown, Kathy Leonard, and those we now name. We pray for the repose of the soul of those who have died especially Sam Hicks. Section of a rector found on page six. Giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come in prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through Jesus Christ our Lord, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Didn't those children melt your heart? Uh, we have uh, Vicki Stevens who will come and give us a lay talk on generosity.
Good morning. I am Vicki Stevens, and I am just tickled as can be to be here to open up this season of Stewardship Tide. It's kind of like Christmas Tide and Easter Tide, but its liturgical color is green. <laughs> I'm really blessed to be part of the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany, along with you guys. Let me tell you some things about Epiphanites. Now, I recalled when I was writing this that Mother Betsy was wont to say, I'm going to tell you about three things. You all remember she was really fond of three in her sermons. Three things about us Epiphanites. We Epiphanites are kind. We Epiphanites are full of faith and remember our past as we look to our future. We Epiphanites really like scripture and we're particularly taken with 1 Corinthians 13, 13. So faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. You know, we've, we've heard that and used that saying so often. We use it, particularly for weddings. I liked it so well, I used it at both of my weddings. <laughs> but we love, and as humans, we also hope. If you'll come forward, please. There's an act of hope that we all, most all, get involved in. <laughs> this is stewardship Powerball. In case you don't know, the Powerball jackpot at the moment is about a billion dollars. So I was thinking, God, if I win the big jackpot, I will help with the poor, the sick, the hungry, the missions, and I'll fix the plumbing. <laughs> the value is immeasurable, and the motto is, give now, what are you waiting for? Now, we wager, and we dream, and we pray that we're just one big win away from nirvana. We're one big win away from heaven on earth. We even pray some. Now, we all have the prayer we know together, the Lord's Prayer, but the prayer I'm thinking of, and you can fill in the blank as I say this loudly, Lord, if I could just win that big jackpot, I would, what would you do? I would buy a new house. Well, if I won that jackpot, I'd be like Oprah. I would buy a new house for you, and a new house for you, and a new house for you. And all the kids up in the choir loft, everybody gets a new house. But look up. Guys, we've got a house. Together, we've got the house of God. Now and for generations to come. I speak as an elder, and that doesn't mean I am an elder in the church, it just means I'm old. <laughs> but so many kids are here today, and for them, they're the young ones. And the future isn't contingent, or the, the continuation of the church is doing it not for just us, but for them. And it's not contingent on a big win, on God gifting us with unimaginable wealth, but it's contingent on us giving back with unimaginable generosity of spirit. Now, yesterday when I came in for the Saturday service and I saw 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 8 in the service leaflet and heard Canon Neal preach on it, I thought, oh man, I felt like a lady that had gone to the prom and was dressed just like somebody else because I had come prepared to speak on that same piece of scripture. And I, I don't know, is, is preaching, uh, I don't know if you did it the same way I did. I went to Google and said stewardship scripture, and this is what came up first. <laughs> but in seriousness, as well as in faith and in hope and in love, I'm gonna repeat this. A teacher at the first service told me that we have to hear something three times before it sinks in. This is your third time. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the churches in Macedonia. 
In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service of the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God, also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring this also to completion, this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. It isn't luck, my brothers and sisters. It's love. Can I have an amen? amen. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. One of the things I do know about Vicki Stevens, she would probably buy you a house if she were to <laughs> win the lottery. Uh, we do welcome you here to the Church of the Epiphany. If you are new among us or if you have been a part of us before but hadn't been here a while and you want to reconnect, please fill out a visitor's card that you'll find in the pew pocket in front of you or go to the first full page in your worship leaflet, take a picture of a QR code and follow that and fill out the forms and uh, we will be happy to connect with you. Uh, we have uh, also, I want to mention the mourner's path. We have a path for, for grief recovery, and that starts in two weeks. Uh, uh, yeah, two weeks. And so be sure to check your tidings for that wonderful uh, group together. And we have an update on our search process. There you are, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll talk first. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so real quick, we are one step closer. <laughs> the vestry is going to meet with the candidate tomorrow evening. Um, in addition to the search committee, has been invited to attend one more time with them. And then also um, uh, former senior wardens have been invited to meet. So we have a good representation um, from our vestry to meet with the final candidate tomorrow evening. Um, on later this week, I have a uh, special vestry meeting uh, convened to, for us to uh, discuss and hopefully vote on an official call. Um, so hopefully stay tuned and we'll see what happens. Thank you. Which leads me to an announcement that I have, and that is that my time with you, because we've got a, re a new rector coming, or we believe we do, my time with you is coming to an end as your interim rector. My last Sunday here will be the last Sunday of October, October 29th. And then when the rector comes, I will be gone for three weeks so that you all can get to know him and his wife and, and I can be off gallivanting somewhere. And uh, then I will return as a parishioner and you'll see me in my civilian clothes again. And uh, call me Neil, instead of Canon Neil, feel free to call me Neil. And uh, I'll be a parishioner and we'll enjoy getting to know our rector together. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. I, uh, if you come forward, our birthdays are here on my right. Baptism anniversaries are here on my left and wedding anniversaries smack dab in the middle. So birthday, birthday, birthday. Oh, right here. And turn to page 830 in your prayer book if you'd like to go along uh, with this as we pray together. Watch over your children, Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. 
raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. And if you'll hold hands as you did on the day of your wedding, how many years? Hmm? 17. 17. Boy, that's a lot of scratch in there, huh? All right, let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in, it, that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send forth your blessing upon this couple who come to you to renew their promises to each other and grant them your grace that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their lives together may continue to be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may kiss your bride. Happy anniversary. And then if you would like to uh, come forward at the end of the service for healing prayers or participate with laying on of hands for someone seeking healing prayers, come forward to this communion rail. Father Chris will be here and uh, we will pray for you. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Basic prayer EA continues from page 361, Book of Common Prayer, page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night when he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciple and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in the remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen.
in your worship leaflet, page number eight, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding may keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain among you, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.